Port Authority Chairman says the operational activities at the East Container Terminal resumed with immediate effect. Prime Minister Mahindra Paksa says that agreements cannot be exited as quickly as they are signed. Sri Lanka Freedom Party to be handed over to the youth after this general election. Mama Upadesha Gavari, Kanusasa Gavari, Pashing Idala, May Pakshe, Ugat, Taruna Pirishakata, May Pakshe, Vadakati, the one bar. One thousand one hundred and two mobile phones and a stock of SIM cards seized from prisons. Good evening. What you just witnessed was how the strike action launched by the employees of the Ports Authority demanding to take the East Container Terminal completely under the purview of the SLPA ending yesterday. Their plan is to set up the gantry cranes at the East Container Terminal within one and a half months. Chairperson of the Sri Lanka Ports Authority, retired General Daya Ratnayaka, explained the future plan for the East Container Terminal. At this moment, um, as we have planned, within next one and a half to two months, we will be able to put the uh, eastern terminal into operation. That is how we have been planning. Uh, we think uh, we will be able to stick to the plan and complete the operations. I don't see there is any uh, problem from any international uh, organization or a country uh, for our uh, work here at the port. Uh, authority. This moment what we have is the uh, memorandum of understanding that we signed, the previous government signed with the Indian uh, authorities. That is the one we had to settle and we have got that settled at this moment. India-China relations or at this moment what is happening between India and China is no effect to the Port Authority. I don't think the government or the Port Authority, our ministry will allow any of those influences coming down to our level. No, it is not. And um, I hope uh, the government uh, and the Port Authority and the Ministry will be able to uh, operationalize the Eastern Terminal very soon. Meanwhile, Harbour Trade Unions have claimed that a conspiracy is underway to remove the East Container Terminal from the purview of the Sri Lanka Ports Authority. Shortcuts Have the struggles of trade unions ended? Our first request is that the East Container Terminal and its operations must fall under complete control of the Sri Lanka Port Authority and that it must not be given to private entities. What is left is to commence operations. We believe that certain issues will arise while commencing operations. During the last four and a half years, Port officials have provided false and incomplete information to the President's secretaries. It is their plan which had been implemented. We believe that this issue can be resolved shortly. A committee has been appointed to investigate past and present irregularities. At Thread Unions, we know the correct details. Within 45 days, we will provide these details to the committee. Who obstructed the struggle to bring the East Container Terminal under the purview of the Sri Lanka Ports Authority? Japan, India. Japan, India and Sri Lanka had agreed to cooperate regarding the matter concerning the East Container Terminal. However, they are not speaking about Japan now. They are mostly speaking about India. 
Even if India acquires this, we feel that this will not be developed. That is because they simply want to occupy it. The Adani Group is one of the key port companies in India. They are constructing a port that would connect all ports in India. The main obstruction for that is the East Container Terminal in Sri Lanka. There is a direct influence on the ECT. Besides that, we have the SAGT. The agreement regarding SAGT will be over within eight years. The Chinese government has some investments in Sri Lanka. The most prominent among them is the Hambantota port and the CICT. As far as we can understand, there is no smooth diplomatic dealing in this respect with India as these two entities have been given to China. Therefore, India is trying to establish some ownership in the port. <laughs> Was the trade union struggle carried out targeting the election? Then they could have procured the cranes after the election. Our minister could have told China to ship the cranes after the election. There is no problem like that here. The cranes have been brought to commence work. However, India and some corrupt officials at the Sri Lanka Port Authority who were eyeing positions at the Indian company intervened. We have been informed that certain discussions are taking place in secret. We will reveal matters relating to this with evidence in the future. Leader of the National People's Power, Andra Kumar Nayaka, spoke about foreign conspiracies. As a matter of fact, are we choosing the government? The people of this country cast their vote. However, it is the Indian High Commission and the US Embassy that choose leaders for several governments. Let me explain this to you, citing two recent examples. What were the two matters that figured extensively during last year's presidential election? They were the April 21st attacks and the MCC agreement. Is the MCC agreement over now? The people created this government for what they say was to tear the MCC agreement. However, the government is now postponing the MCC agreement until August. Is this the government of the people? The government belongs to the US Embassy. The second problem is the East Jetty. We developed the East Jetty. Four years ago, we offloaded the cranes and began operations of the East Terminal. If operations had begun, it cannot be sold. Therefore, India didn't allow the offloading process to take place. What was the ultimate decision? The equipment would be provided, but they cannot be installed. For 72 years, our country has been destroyed. What worse can happen after the election? How much has been wasted already? They pushed our country into a debt trap. They destroyed the environment of our country. There were permits to transport sand and soil in the country. But what did the government do? They scrapped off the system. Why is that? That was to allow the provincial level politicians to earn money. It is a politician in Dhulapitiya who is involved in sand mining in the area. At the same time, it is the environment minister who is involved in sand mining in Manampitiya. Therefore, the leaders of our country have done the worst possible things that they can do. However, there is something that can be done at this election. The parliament can be cleaned. Any of the parliamentarians have not broken through barriers and doors to enter parliament. They entered parliament as the people voted for them. What must be done now? We must stop electing those people to parliament. Meanwhile, leader of the Tamil National Alliance, R. Sambandhan, expressed these views about foreign agreements. A plan connecting Colombo and Trincomalee is currently underway. The controversial Millennium Challenge Corporation Pact has paved the way for this. This corridor will be constructed connecting Colombo and Trincomalee via Kandy. The construction of this corridor affects not only Sri Lanka but India as well. Therefore, this matter is not normal. <laughs> Meanwhile, chief incumbent of the Sri Sunetra Devi Pirivena in Papiliana, Venerable Professor Madagoda Abhyathisathero, expressed these views about foreign intervention during the Amadam Sicilia program held at the Carlton residence in Tangol. One of the many advice that we give to our people is that we must always be vigilant of anything harmful that might come our way. Due to Sri Lanka's strategic location in the Indian Ocean, we will always be prone to foreign intervention and various other issues. Sri Lanka has faced nearly 17 invasions so far and we have won all of them. 
Every time another country establishes control over Sri Lanka, it was done through agreements. Even the British established their control through the signing of an agreement. So we need to be vigilant about any agreement. All foreign countries established their power in Sri Lanka via agreements and not through fighting. <laughs> Former Sports Minister Mahinda Nanda Alutkamake has insisted that he would not change his stance over his recent statement on match fixing. Against such a backdrop, former Test cricket captain Arjuna Ranasunga has emphasized that the former minister must reveal the details in his possession to the country. A controversy had arisen after former sports minister Mahinda Nanda Alutkamage recently claimed that the finals of the 2011 Cricket World Cup had been fixed. Amid such claims, general manager of the anti-corruption unit at the International Cricket Council, Alex Marshall, said that the global body had not received any evidence relating to match fixing. He added that there is no record of any letter sent regarding this by former sports minister Mahinda Nanda Alutkamage. The special investigation unit on prevention of offences relating to sports wrapped up its investigations yesterday citing that there are no evidence corroborating claims that the finals of the 2011 World Cup had been fixed. Against this backdrop, these were the remarks expressed by former sports minister Mahinda Nanda Alut Gamage in this regard. I provided a statement considering the seriousness of this. However, this must be investigated by the International Cricket Council. I have given them information regarding this. The police spokesman has commented on an unfair incident that is of very low standards. I am requesting the president to carry out a complete investigation into this. I will continue to uphold my stance. That will not change. <laughs> India This could be a conspiracy to allow India to occupy a position in exchange for a bribe. My friend Mahinda Nanda has become a pawn in this conspiracy. Alex Marshall of the International Cricket Council is saying that nothing of that sort had taken place. If the police are also saying that it had not taken place, let me confidently stress that our senior cricket players have not been involved in match fixing under any circumstances. Nah, nah, nah. On the verge of occupying the post of ICC chairman, that is the highest post in the cricketing world, Mahindan and Dalut Gamage created suspicion over the trust concern in the game of cricket. He shamed the country in the face of the world to prevent Sangakkara from being appointed to a top position. He acted in line with the intentions of the current government. The police are now saying that Sangakkara had not done anything wrong. They say that there is no evidence to prove Alut Gamage's claims. <laughs> I too accompanied the then president Mahindra Rajapaksa to spectate the match in Mumbai. However, we did not witness anything of that nature. Match fixing cannot be carried out without the involvement of players. These are sensations that are whipped up during an election. It is not just Mahindra Nandalud Gamage's story. There is someone who is manipulating him. As a result of the massive controversy that stemmed out of this, the government might have instructed to sweep the matter under the carpet. <laughs> You know that there was a UN Deputy Secretary General in Sri Lanka by the name of Jayanta Dhanapala. He faced a similar issue. When he was nominated to the post of the UN Secretary General, they prevented him and did not give him that chance. Who was appointed? Ben Ki-moon from Korea. Who brought this allegation against Sangakkara? It is Mahindananda. These dirty individuals have betrayed the country. This is what happened to Jayanta Dhanapala. <laughs> I publicly said that an investigation must take place if there are such allegations in order to prove them. He said that the players were not involved. However, it was the players who were first summoned for the investigation. Before three days had gone by, they finished the investigation and cleared the cricketers of the accusations against them. Mahindan and Alud Gamage must tell the country about the information that he has at hand. Otherwise, he must apologize and admit that he has done something wrong. <laughs> One word to describe. Several cricketers from England's Surrey County Cricket Club in the likes of Alex Stewart, Gareth Batty, Sam Curran, Rory Burns, Ravi Rampal have paid tribute to Kumar Sangakkara. One word to describe Kumar Sangakkara. Unique. Legendary. The greatest. Role model. Gentleman. Master. Majestic. Humble. Legend.
inspirational. Political update. Prime Minister Mahind Rajapaksha has informed the Indian Prime Minister that the Matan International Airport will not be given to India. He made this statement during a party supporters meeting in Virakatia today. During the previous government, the ministers happily voted in favour of giving away the port to another country. But ultimately, who paid the price? The loss was to our country. They attempted to sell the airport as well. They were signing an agreement. During my recent visit to India, I informed Prime Minister Modi that the airport will not be given away as it is located in my village. Prime Minister Modi clearly said that they will not touch the airport. The biggest issue when establishing agreements with foreign nations is that such agreements cannot be changed afterwards. Even if the other party refuses, we are compelled to continue with the agreement. If not, we will have to confront them and deal with several complications. The MCC agreement was brought forward. We established a review committee and citing their report, we have taken steps to tell them the basis to refuse the agreement. The final report of the review committee will be sent to them as well. Everyone questions us as to why the government is yet to officially refuse this agreement. However, prior to withdrawing from this matter, the general public must be aware of this matter. <laughs> Meanwhile, leader of the United National Party, Rani Vikramasinghe, in Avisavela today, pledged to bring in a relief program to the general public with the support of the international funding institutions. People have lost their jobs. Foreign remittances and other modes of foreign income have been negatively affected. The government now thinks it can burden the public with three months worth of bills. This would burden the general public even more. What must be done first is to obtain foreign currency denominated aid. The government must hold discussions with the IMF and establish agreements. We must hold discussions with friendly countries and get their support. I will educate everyone as to how this should be done and how much of funds we should obtain. Tomorrow I will discuss this with them. We have a program in place that would target everything the flower bud agreement failed to achieve. When we handed over the government in 2019, the economy was in a much better condition. But the present government failed to develop it. I am present here today to challenge the government and to prove that only the UNP can provide relief to the general public. Meanwhile, leader of the Samagi Janabala Vege, Sajid Premadasa, attended a public rally in Muthur, Trincomalee yesterday. The present government cannot do anything. In the recent past, the government fabricated a huge lie which tarnished the image of our internationally acclaimed cricketers. After all the effort and hard work our cricketers invested to reach the finals in 2011, what did the government do? They tarnished their image. The economy is in ruins at present and people don't have money to survive. Everyone is blaming the government. They fabricate such lies to divert the attention of the general public. The claim that the match in 2011 was fixed is nothing but a lie. Now investigations have concluded and all our sportsmen have been released from this matter. We renovated the temples across the island. We improved the Dhamma school projects in the country. But today they are using others to sling mud at us. Sajid Premadasa is not a Buddhist who creates conflict among ethnic communities. Former President and Chairman of the Sri Lanka Freedom Party, Maitri Palasiri Sena, attended a public rally in Kalutara North today. The public rally was organized by the leader of the Kalutara District team of the SLFP, Sumit Lal Mendis. <laughs> It's true that our party is currently experiencing a temporary setback. However, let me make this very clear. The Sri Lanka Freedom Party has a future. After the upcoming election is over, I will serve as an advisor to the SLFP and hand over the party duties to the younger and educated members of the SLFP. The party must be handed over to the educated and innovative individuals who are open to new ideas rather than traditional politics. The Sri Lanka Freedom Party has a bright future 
future ahead of it. No one needs to panic. Today, we have joined Gotabe Rajapaksa and Mahindra Rajapaksa's government to help the people of this country to develop our motherland. Every citizen who loves Sri Lanka must support this government. <laughs> Let's now take a look at some of the views expressed in the political arena today. 2020. The Vyatmaga movement was founded by Gota Beraj Paksa and will support his administration. It has played a vital role in garnering more support. If someone is preventing the Vyatmaga movement from playing on the pitch that it had prepared, then they are not professionals. There is a group claiming to be from the Viat Maga movement. To give them a chance, they were asked to assist Gotabe Rajapaksa's victory. Although eight months earlier they said a list of intellectuals and professionals would be prepared, we can now see who is on the list. That includes old faces who face several accusations. <laughs> I must tell Dayasiri that I will obtain at least one vote more than him in Gampaha. Dayasiri won't win. Watch us win 150 seats that comprise of only SLP peers. If they said not to vote for anyone who is linked to Maitri, Mahinda is also included. He was appointed as Prime Minister by Maitri. We will not comment on this further, as we value unity and the country. In 2015, if Mahindra Rajapaksa had said he would make Maitri Prime Minister, then this problem wouldn't have arisen. They asked us as to who are the original SLPP members. In 2017, one stalwart said if we formed the SLPP, we would be left on the streets. However, fate had it that the person who said that is contesting from the SLPP. If that happened to me, I would have ended my life. In politics, it is said that we are correct as long as our rivals attack us. That is what we have to say. They are attacking the tree which bears fruits. Some might feel jealous by looking at the developments in Polonarua. Therefore, conspiracies can be created. The SLPP list shows that good individuals in the UNP are now with the SLPP. If they work with me with honest intentions, I will protect them and grant them security and other perks as well. I invite all the UNPers to work collectively with us. Lakshman Yapa has said he has invited the UNP to form a two-thirds majority. The UNP has also said that they would go to strengthen them. It was me who pressurized Sirisena to chase away Arjun Mahendran. Ranil Vikramasinghe said he would resign as Prime Minister if Mahendran is removed. The UNP doesn't have a vote base now. They can leave our home and yell from their rented house. They are challenging the United National Party. It will take some time for the elephant to wake up. Once it wakes up, no one can take it down. The UNP's vote machine is now active. There are flies on top of the elephant, but it doesn't care. In the story of the great elephant, the elephant ran away without the tail in the presence of the dog. In this instance, the dog left its tail behind. The dog can survive without the tail, but the tail can't survive without the dog. Our dog is very strong now, as its tail had been cut off. <laughs> Who are the people contesting under the symbol of the telephone? What have they done? Once the election is over, we can see what will happen to them. We can take action against those who have placed their foot on both sides. Five members of the Maharagama local authority have been removed. As a UNP member, I am in Mathara. In my area, three members worked against my budget, but they were not removed. I am not afraid of Ranil, Akila or any UNP member who breaches the disciplinary code. If you can remove me, I am ready for that challenge. 2020. Three suspects have been arrested in connection to the incident where a group of individuals had forcefully entered the party office of an SLPP candidate in Suduvalla, Madampe. 
Preparations were underway last night for a political meeting due to be convened at a house in Suduvella, Madampe. The meeting was organized in support of SLPP members Sanat Nishanta and Palita Rohana. However, the owner of the house claims that a group had threatened him last night to cancel the meeting. At around 12 midnight yesterday, a jeep arrived at my place. When I went outside, I saw some people removing the posters. When I asked them what they were doing, they pointed the gun at me and told me to cancel the meeting convened at my house tomorrow. They threatened me and left in their jeep. I was held at gunpoint. They asked me to cancel tomorrow's meeting. Following a complaint lodged at the Madampe police last night, the respective factions were summoned to the police station this morning. Police said three suspects were arrested in connection to the incident and they are due to be produced before the Chilav magistrate. A meeting was organized for me and Sanat Nishanta, the owner of the house where the meeting was to be convened, was threatened with a gun. I am very disappointed. We are all in the same party. I heard that this was done by a group including the son-in-law of Piyankara Jayaratna. Piyankara Jayaratna is a very good friend of mine. We are members of one political party. <laughs> There has been an issue in pasting posters. The argument had led to a conflict. My son-in-law had been there and he is not involved. It has happened between another few of my brothers. It has all been settled now. The chief incumbent hero of the temple of Lihinyagala in Kandy claims that the indigenous paintings of the Lihinyagala temple belonging to the prehistoric age have not been conserved. He further stated that the archaeological authorities should pay their full attention to this matter immediately. This temple that belongs to the 3rd century BC consists of an ancient staircase, a monastery and a temple shrine that belongs to the Candian kingdom. Information from the prehistoric ages to recent times is conserved in the temple. Paintings completed by prehistoric humans is to be seen in this temple. Inside one cave, it holds paintings that belong to the prehistoric ages. Many other paintings belong to the Candian kingdom. In this temple, which is known for being the only place in the central province with prehistoric paintings, 13 indigenous paintings can also be seen in one of its caves. The temple, which has a Buddha statue that is considered to fall under the Candian kingdom, is decorated with paintings, including the Uduviana. Temporary solutions have been installed to the monastery with Singhala roof tiles. The chief incumbent, Thero, claims that even though this temple is named as a secured memorial, without proper conservation, there is a risk of paintings being destroyed. The paintings have started to fade away. If the old monastery remains in these conditions further, it will not even last for one or two years. It would be good if the officials of the Department of Archaeology pay their attention to this and take steps to conserve them. Today marks a very important day in the Buddhist calendar as Buddhists around the world observe Asala Full Moon Poe Day. Adhering to health guidelines, Buddhist devotees across the island engaged in religious observances. According to Buddhist literature, it was on this day that Lord Buddha was conceived in the womb of Mahamaya Devi. It was on a day like this that Lord Buddha renounced worldly pleasures and fortunes and preached his first Dhamma doctrine. It was also on this poor day that the tooth relic was brought to Sri Lanka by Princess Hevamala and Prince Danta, giving birth to the Dalda Perahara. Asala Full Moon Poe Day commemorates the commencement of the Vas season, marking the bhikkhus' retreat during the rainy season. President Gotabe Rajapaksha paid homage to the ancient Mihindu Aranya Senasanya in Mihintale this morning and engaged in religious observances. President Rajapaksha also engaged in a conversation with the Chief Sangha of the Vanasasi Sangha Council of the Sri Rohana chapter of the Siam sect, Venerable Galpata Sumanathero. Meanwhile, the Amadam Sisila Dhamma sermon organized every month was held at the Carlton residence in Tangol today under the auspices of the chief incumbent of the Sunetra Mahadevi Piriven in Papiliana, Venerable Professor Madagoda Abhethisa Thero. Prime Minister Mahindra Rajapaksha and relatives were present at the event.
Meanwhile, the Sambuddha Puja was organized every four year by the Capital Maharaja Organization to place opposite its head office at the Shah Kemalake this afternoon. The event was sponsored by A.F. Jones. <laughs> Devotees in large numbers arrived at the historic temple of the sacred tooth relic today. The devotees engaged in religious observances, adhering to health guidelines. A large number of devotees had also arrived at the sacred land of Anuradhapura. The highest number of devotees to be seen at the Jai Sri Mahabodhi and Ruan Varisaya following the COVID-19 outbreak were witnessed today. In line with Asarapoya, the Pusul Pitiya Temple in Kutmale held a special religious function today. The event was held under the auspices of the chief incumbent of the Pusul Pitiya Temple, Venerable Amunugama Rajaguru Vipassi Thero. News First broadcast a special Damsavya program from the temple. Views were expressed in the political arena today regarding the manner in which the Criminal Investigations Department recorded a statement from the leader of the United National Party, Rani Vikramasinghe, about the central bank bond scam. The statement was recorded yesterday at the residence of Rani Vikramasinghe, located on 5th Lane, Kolpati. There were accusations levelled against Rani Vikramasinghe, claiming he was engaged in deal politics with the Rajpaksas. However, these claims have now been confirmed. The situation is such that when Rani Vikramasinghe was requested to provide a statement to the CID regarding the central bank bond scam, the CID had to visit his house to record the statement. This clearly shows that the UNP is prepared to join forces with Rajapaksa family in the future. <laughs> During the government headed by Rani Vikramasinghe, the CID used to visit the former First Lady to record evidence. Today, the CID visits the residence of Rani Vikramasinghe to record statements. What is the meaning of this? The law was not enforced against the powerful and wealthy factions back then, and it's the same situation at present. <laughs> Those who made such wrong decisions, where are they today? Are they part of the Samagi Jana Balavegya? Both factions are covering up for each other. We are trying to put a stop to this and go forward in a straightforward path. Mahinda Ananda is a Sri Lankan citizen. So is Ranil Vikramasinghe. So are all the cricketers. My view is that the law should be enforced on everyone equally. There should be no difference. This is the only way Sri Lanka can develop. Imtiaz Bakir Maka convened a media briefing in Colombo today. A tense situation arose while he was expressing his views regarding the recent statement made by Karuna Aman. They questioned Sangakara for nine hours. However, they did not question Karuna Amman for at least two hours over the dangerous remark he made. The police visit the home of the minister whose claims did not have any evidence. But Sangakara and Mahela are summoned to the police. According to whose agenda is Karuna Amman working? The good governance government has its positives and negatives. A majority in the party stood against the negatives. Are you a journalist from a state media outlet? I wish to clarify that. Are you from a state media institution? It is not only the state media, but media houses with close ties to the government may plant false stories. We do not wish to be deterred by the conduct of certain media outlets, including those that are mouthpieces of the government. We must speak the truth. <laughs> Wrong is wrong irrespective of who does it. 
You asked about sending the police to the speaker's official residence to meet Shiranti Rajapaksa. Where are those who made the wrong decisions? Are they with the Samag Janabala Vege? They are scratching each other's backs. We are trying to embark on a clear journey by ending this type of politics. अभी पहले ली गमन क्या नहीं आता ना आप तुम ये काम हम भी तुम्हें तुम ये क्या हमने एक बार तो हम तुम्हें क्या दिल्ली की संदर्भ में हमारा तुझे आने आप नाम मार क्या ने ने मामा एक बार भी इतना करो भाई ना टीएनए की बात तुझे और मैं ही मारा देखो मामा एक टीएनए का एक करेंगे एम एम के don't forget that although Vijayakala Maheswaran is not with us, they attempted to find solutions within a democratic framework. Karuna Amman, who is with Mahindra Rajapaksa and Pillayan, are those who murdered people by not trusting the democratic framework. He should contest, but what about his statement? That is very dangerous. I understand Tamil very well. Don't distort his statement. Are you trying to paint a clean image of Karuna Man? Before coming here, tell your employers to come and provide answers like us to the media. You are working for the government and its agenda. This is a disgrace to the media fraternity. 1,102 mobile phones have been discovered in raids conducted in prisons island-wide. Prisons Commissioner General Tushara Upuldenia said the operations were conducted under the supervision of the prison superintendents and chief jailers of respective prisons. The Prisons Commissioner General said 688 SIM cards and 1,310 phone batteries were discovered during the raids. A majority of 277 mobile phones were discovered from the Nigambo prison. 132 SIM cards and 286 phone batteries were also discovered from the Nigambo prison. Prisons Commissioner General added 203 mobile phones and 144 SIM cards were discovered at the Kalamo Remand prison. 199 mobile phones and 125 SIM cards have been discovered at the Valicata prison. The Commissioner General further said 133 mobile phones and 108 SIM cards were discovered at the magazine prison. News from foreign, for, uh, foreign news. A supporter of Islamic State who plotted to bomb St. Paul's Cathedral at Easter has been sentenced to life in prison. 36-year-old Safiya Amira Sheikh from West London admitted preparing terrorist attacks and disseminating terrorist publications that encouraged others to launch similar attacks. Foreign media reported that she had been under police and MI5 surveillance. Sheikh will have to serve a minimum term of 14 years before being considered for release by the parole board. And that's a wrap of primetime news for tonight. We leave you tonight with the Nagatima Sri Lanka song sung by Sri Lankans residing in Canada. I'm Zenith Musafa and tonight's news interpreter is Tarka Gabriel. Good night and take care. <laughs>
Nidimo, Sri Lanka.